Park. All right, guys, we are back now, uh, still in Kingdom Plante, um, but now we want to look at our vascular plants and how they reproduce, whether it's with um, cones or with seeds. Um, so let's just jump right in. So last time we talked about our non-vascular plants um, that have no seeds and our vascular plants that also don't have seeds. Uh, today, we want to focus on our vascular plants that have seeds on cones, including uh, conifer phyta, which are conifers or pine trees, cycadophyta, which um, are sago palms. That might not mean a lot to you right now, but you will be very familiar with them when you see some pictures. Um, we're also going to look at ginkgo phyta, ginkgo trees, um, and gnetophytas are also in this, um, but quite frankly, we don't spend a lot of time on them and they're kind of ugly. Um, so we have no lab specimen to look at, um, though I might post a video for you for those of you interested on the D2L. And then we're gonna look at our vascular plants that do have flowers and fruits to bear seeds. Um, and all of them are in anthophyta. Um, and just something to note, last time we looked uh, very briefly at hornworts, our anthocerophyta, um, but that is not the same as anthophyta. So when you're doing your lab worksheet, when you're taking your lab quizzes, um, be sure to write the one that you mean. Uh, if you mean flowering plants, you mean anthophyta. So some common characteristics of plants like we touched upon last time, uh, they are photoautotrophic. So they do photosynthesis to make their own food. Uh, their cell walls are made up of cellulose or starch. They are non-modal, plants do not move. And even though they may have flagellated sperm, uh, gametes are not considered independent living organisms. So as a whole, plants are non-modal. Plants can reproduce sexually and asexually. They can be monoecious. Remember mono, that prefix meaning one. So one plant with male and female structures or dioecious, uh, plants that have separate male uh, and female plants. And then uh, most plants have this haploid and diploid multicellular form. We call that the alternation of generations. Um, and remember, that's different from animals. In animals, only the gametes are haploid. Uh, so let's talk about that alternation of generations again. I know it's kind of confusing. There are lots of resources on the lecture and lab D2L for you um, about the this topic. Uh, but remember, you have a haploid gametophyte. The gametophyte makes the sex organs. The antheridium is going to produce the sperm and the archegonium produces the eggs. Those gametes will fuse in order to make the diploid zygote. Uh, and that zygote is going to then grow into your diploid sporophyte. Uh, and then through meiosis, um, we will make that, um, the, or we will make spores that can grow into the gametophyte. So let's first uh, talk about our gymnosperms. Uh, so gymnosperms, they are vascular. They have xylem and phloem. Their name is Greek, and it means naked seeds um, because they are carrying uh, these seeds on cones. Uh, these male cones make pollen. We'll see in a little bit. They're sort of papery, smaller usually. Um, and then there are the female cones. They're more woody, um, usually larger, that make eggs. Uh, and we are going to look at really three, but we'll mention the fourth uh, different phyla. We got uh, conifer phyta, which are pine trees. These are the most common. Uh, we got cycadophyta, which are sago palms. Those are used very commonly um, as, as sort of um, um, 
like lawn decorations and potted plants here. Uh, and then we've got ginkgo phyta. They're interesting. They're dioecious, meaning they're separate male and female. And they actually don't have cones. Um, and there's only one extant or still living species. And then Gnetophyta are native to West Africa. They're sometimes used in landscaping. Um, and, and like I said, I do think they're, they're sort of ugly, leathery vine looking plants. Um, so they're in this, but we won't spend a lot of time with them. So let's first talk about gymnosperm reproduction. Uh, we've got our diploid sporophyte is the dominant life stage. So when you are looking at a pine tree or a sago palm or even those ugly gnetophytes, um, you're looking at a 2N diploid structure. They are what we call heterosporous. Uh, that means there's different kinds of these spores. Uh, the male spores are called microspores and they make pollen. The female uh, is called a megaspore, which makes the egg. Um, and pollen is airborne. Now, this is a huge evolutionary advantage compared to uh, waterborne uh, seedless plants um, because with pollen, we can uh, have this reproduction in more dry conditions. Um, and if you look at the pollen from these gymnosperms, you'll see that they're sort of winged. Um, so that is the air that is moving the pollen um, around. And living here in the low country, we see this every spring. Um, you know, our cars all get covered in yellow pollen from pine trees. Um, we see that the zygote is going to become a seed, and that is going to grow our sporophyte, our tree. And seeds are also this, this great evolutionary advantage um, because it provides nutrients and protection to that sporophyte, um, and it can survive a much longer time without starting to grow or germinate. Whereas um, in our seedless plants, you know, those spores grow and our spores drop to the ground and they grow. Having a seed gives you more protection. Um, so here is um, a little bit more about these cones. Um, there's two types of cones for the two different types of spores. Again, we have our pollen bearing cone. Um, that is going to hold on to our microspores. That's our pollen grain um, that sort of have these wings that, that can be, um, or I guess that are used when the wind blows, it catches this pollen grain and can move it. Uh, then we've got the seed bearing cone, which is the female megasporangia. Um, that's where the egg is. And it takes about three years um, in order to develop a seed. So here's a picture, um, the picture that uh, has the smaller sort of uh, longer looking cones. Those are the male cones. Um, and then the picture on uh, the right side that has the woodier larger cone, that's the female cone. Um, and here's sort of this life cycle of, of what happens with um, a pine cone. So the very top picture, that's year one. That's just developing that uh, cone uh, or that female cone. And then year two, you can see the scales are all still um, flattened. It's, it's not opened up. Um, that's year two. And then year three, you can see the scales are opened up. Um, and then that is when that um, cone is, is ready to bear its seeds. Um, so here's an example of our cycads or our sago palms. Again, these are very popular in landscaping and yard decorations um, here in the low country. Um, so you can see this strobilis, this cone structure growing out of the middle of this sago palm. Uh, and then the female sago palm is on the right. Uh, the wind will blow the pollen to that female sago palm 
where then the seeds are, are, are housed. Next is Ginkgo phyta. Um, there's only one species, uh, that's the Ginkgo biloba. Sometimes it's called the maidenhair tree. Um, and male trees are widely cultivated. They are actually um, used in urban landscaping uh, in cities. So they're very resilient um, and help obviously with air pollution. Um, but the females make this disgusting smelling seed pod um, and they're not adequately adv cultivated. Um, I grew up in the Chicagoland area and there are places in downtown Chicago where the female ginkgo trees were planted for some reason. Um, and every year they have to put up signs telling people to not crush the pods and, and reminding them that the essentially garbage smell is is from the trees. Um, but here's what they look like. You can see the fan-shaped leaf of the ginkgo um, and then the the little seed pods uh, sort of almost fruit-like but not structure of the female ginkgo in the picture below. Okay, so that is all we have for our gymnosperms. Let's uh, jump into our angiosperms. Again, all of our angiosperms are going to be in phylum Anthophyta. Um, so angiosperms are going to produce flowers and or fruit uh, to encase their seeds. Uh, and this is the most diverse, most numerous, and incredibly edible um, grouping of plants. In order to sort of split up this very diverse and numerous group, uh, we classify them as being a monocot or a dicot. And you'll also see you dicot, it means the same thing. Um, we've got what we call uh, mega gametophytes being the female version and the microgametophytes being the male. And our microgametophytes we see as pollen. Um, and if we were to look at this uh, angiosperm pollen under a microscope, it does look a little bit different than the uh, gymnosperm pollen. It, it's not as heavily relying um, on wind, though that still is a, a strategy, um, but will actually rely on, on uh, pollinators to, to do the pollination. Uh, the pollen is going to have two nuclei. One is called a tube nucleus that is going to grow a pollen tube um, once the pollen has reached um, the stigma, it will grow this pollen tube. And then there's what we call the generative nucleus um, that is going to have two sperm. So we are going to see double fertilization. Uh, so here's our table that is going to show us some information about our monocots and our dicots. First, monocots are in a class called monocotyledonae, and our dicots are in eudicotyledonae. Uh, what does it mean to be a monocot? Well, it means that you have one cotyledon, or um, seed leaf, or baby leaf, and we'll see some pictures coming up. Uh, we also know that they will have fibrous root systems, and the vascular bundles are going to be in a circle in those roots. When we look at their stems, uh, they will have the uh, sort of messy, I like to say messy for monocot, M and M, uh, that their vascular bundles are scattered in their stems. Uh, we see that their leaves uh, are narrow and they have parallel veins and their flowers have uh, three or six or multiples of three or six number of petals. Um, and many grasses are a great example here. Our uh, dicots will have two cotyledons or uh, seed or baby leaves. They will have a taproot system with the xylem and the phloem in the center of their root in a little star or X shape. 
Uh, their vascular bundles are going to be in a ring around the outer uh, part of the stem. They have broad leaves that have branched or sort of reticulated, sort of uh, looks like a river delta um, veins. And they have four or five petals or multiples of four and five petals. Um, and, you know, most trees that you'll see outside, like an oak tree or a maple tree, are a good example. Um, so here's just some pictures showing you what we mean um, by that table. So our monocot with the parallel leaf veins on the, on the picture to the far left, um, our messy vascular bundle arrangement uh, in the stem. We've got one seed leaf, fibrous root systems, and of course if we count the petals um, it's going to be in multiples of three. Um, versus are you dicots where we have this more broad and branching vein in our leaves. Um, we have this uh, organization um, in our stem in a nice circle, two seed leaves, this tap root, and if we count the petals um, in multiples uh, of fours and fives. Uh, so when we look at flowers, we should also look at some flower parts and pieces. Um, first being the peduncle, that is the stalk um, holding up the flower. We've got our receptacle, that's the very base part of the flower. If you were to pick off all of the petals, like that would be the chunky part left behind. Um, you have the sepal, which is the outermost uh, sort of leafy swirl around a flower. It forms what we call the calyx. Uh, you have a petal, that's the bright colorful part. A bunch of them together forms the corolla. Uh, you've got the stamen, that is the male portion. It includes the filament, the anther, and then of course the pollen grains. Uh, then you have the carpal, this could also be labeled as the pistil in some uh, texts. It's the female portion that is going to have the ovary, the style, and the stigma. Um, so here's that structure that we are talking about again. Um, of course, the receptacle, that's that base part, uh, the peduncle being the stalky part, the, the leafy green part around, um, the sepal uh, as a whorl, it makes the calyx. You've got your petals uh, making the corolla. And then of course your male and female structures. So the male being the anther and the filament on the anther is where we find the pollen. Uh, and then the stigma, that sticky section where the pollen attaches, the style, this long uh, structure that leads down to the ovary where we have the ovules um, and where the seeds will grow. Uh, so what are fruits? Uh, fruits are going to form when that plant ovary undergoes changes. Uh, if it becomes dry and hard, um, that, that's one option and that can be like uh, nuts and non-fruiting trees, think like uh, those little whirly bird things that fall from a maple tree um, or corn or legumes, beans, uh, that's a dry or hardened um, change. The ovary can also become enlarged and fleshy and, and we have a few different types of fruits we can make. There's our simple fleshy fruit that's made from one single ovary, uh, so think like a pea is made from one ovary. Uh, you can have accessory, which is where simple fruits um, have other parts of the flower, um, like an apple or a pear, um, actually come out of the receptacle portion um, as well. Uh, and then uh, we have complex fleshy fruits uh, that form when more than one ovary are involved in making the fruit. Um, and if we have aggregate fruits, that's multiple ovaries in, in one flower. Think like a raspberry.
Uh, and then we can have multiple fruits where there's lots of different ovaries from different flowers combining together. And a good example is a pineapple. So here's some pictures showing you exactly those things. Um, and, and you can spend as much time as you want on them. But seeing we just spoke of it, I'm going to move it ahead. Um, and then we have some sort of intermediate type things too. Um, some other dry fruits that, that we can talk about. Uh, sunflowers are considered that dry fruit. Lettuce, um, though we often call them leaves. Uh, they, they are part of the fruit. Uh, wheat and corn. Um, and then there's some fleshy or partially fleshy fruits like grapes, eggplants, cucumbers, and squash. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about some plant anatomy, um, including vascular tissue, roots, stems, and leaves. So uh, earlier when we talked about non-vascular plants, we, we very briefly talked about what does that mean, um, but our vascular plants are just plants that have tissue to move water and to move nutrients. Uh, so our xylem transports water. And I like to remember W, X, Y, Z. W for water, X, Y is the first two letters of xylem. And to say xylem, you need that Z sound. So xylem transports water. Uh, and then we have phloem to transport nutrients. And that one's a little easier, I guess. I just think of the uh, pH making an F sound the same as the F sound that is in food. So phloem is transporting the food. Uh, when we look at roots, um, we're going to look at primary growth, and that is it growing in, in height lengthwise. Uh, secondary growth is growing in diameter, getting wider. Um, and to do all of that growth, we need a few other parts and pieces. Um, we want to talk about the radical. That's the very uh, first root that is going to come out of a seed. Uh, and then the apical Mary stem, that is going to be where our primary growth is happening. Um, that is where we are getting our plant to grow uh, its roots longer. Uh, then we have a tap root, which is just one main root that drives into the ground and then smaller branching roots grow from it, as opposed to a fibrous root where we have um, all of these uh, roots just growing out in all different directions. And then the root cap is, is what is going to protect um, the very uh, tip of the roots where that apical Mary stem is to allow it to grow um, against gravity, really, um, and, and protect it, lubricate it to do that growth. Uh, when we look at the tissues that are involved, we've got the epidermis um, or the periderm, which is the surface. We've got the cortex, which is right below that epidermis. Um, that's made of parenchyma cells, um, which also have something called amyoplasts, which are going to store starch. So a plant's roots are a great place for it to store its extra food in case it comes upon conditions where it, it can't do photosynthesis and make more sugar. It has a, a storage. Uh, then we have the endodermis that is going to be an inner layer um, and that is going to act sort of like a sieve in order to control what water moves in and out uh, or what structures I guess to nutrients and things move in and out of the roots. Uh, and then we have our paracycle which is what produces our secondary roots. That's uh, going to be um, that growth width wise. Um, and here's our table again, just highlighting the type of roots, but we also want to look at where those vascular tissues are located. Uh, so in a monocot, it's in a circle around the center pith, that middle part. Um, and a dicot, it's in a uh, sort of X or star shaped. Um, I don't have a great mnemonic device to help you remember this. I just 
uh, sort of go with it. But if you come up with one, please let me know. I'm happy to share it with our class. Um, but here is that monocot root. Um, so we've got, you know, this outside epidermis, we've got this cortex, and then this circle of endodermis, okay? Um, and then our vascular tissue around in a nice circle. And then um, our eudicot root, different structure, and that on the outsides, that epidermis, then you've got all of the cortex, um, you've got your endodermis and that X or star shape to uh, be where our uh, vascular bundles are. When we look at our stem, uh, we have what is called a terminal bud that's going to have apical meristem at the tip. So there's no cap over that. It's not growing against gravity. Um, it does have bud scales on it in order to sort of protect it from the environment. Um, but that is where growth is going to happen. Um, a node is just where a leaf uh, attaches. Okay, um, and, and then we have our axillary bud that is going to be between the leaf and the stem. It's going to either form flowers or more stems. And we can also look at scars um, on our, our uh, stem where we've shed buds or we've lost leaves. Uh, and that can be used to measure yearly growth as well as identify um, what type of plants uh, uh, it is. Uh, when we look at the tissues, we've got uh, epidermis, which is the surface. Uh, we've got uh, what we call cutin, which is a waxy covering um, on the outside of the epidermis. Sometimes as a whole, we call that a cuticle. Uh, we've got a cortex just inside of the epidermis uh, and a pith right in the center. These are going to be where we store starch. Uh, it's made of calenchyma cells, which are these thick walled fibrous, uh, like long cells. Uh, it's what makes up like the hair in celery stalks when you like bite in celery, um, as well as glorenchyma, which is um, an even thicker supportive type cell. Um, and it's what makes up linen and cotton fibers. How do we get uh, secondary growth? Well, we have vascular cambium, uh, and we find these in our eudicots, where the secondary xylem and phloem grow uh, horizontally. And that's going to be found between our xylem and our phloem rings. So this is like our tree rings. You can count yearly um, how it's grown out. Uh, bark is just all the tissue outside of a vascular cambium, though you might only think of it uh, as, you know, the brown stuff on the outside of a tree. It, it goes into the tree as well. Um, we've got cork cambium, which makes cork cells, um, which make what we call the periderm, which is going to replace epidermis um, because the epidermis will rupture uh, um, as this stem gets wider. And then finally, we've got this lenticel, which is an opening in the cork layer uh, that lets gas move in and out. Uh, and of course, what does that mean for when we're looking at uh, these vascular bundles in the stem? Um, again, here's our chart. I like to think of the monocot as messy. There are vascular bundles throughout the entire stem. Um, so xylem and phloem are moving through, are moving water and nutrients through the entire uh, part of this stem. Where in our eudicot, we have this nice circular arrangement around sort of the central pith storage area. Um, so it's much differently organized. I like to pretend more organized than my messy monocot. Um, and, and here's a very um, often confused uh, point. Um, our monocot root has this endoderm, this middle uh, sort of, of layer. Here it is, that endoderm uh, that our eucots 
uh, or our U dicot doesn't have in the stem, right? There's no uh, center tissue layer. So um, they get confused, but they are definitely different. And you'll want to, to note and see those differences as you're filling out your uh, lab worksheet. Okay, leaves. Uh, we've got a petiole. That's the little stem of the leaf. Um, the leaf itself is called a blade. Uh, most of the photosynthesis occurs in tissue we call the palisade mesophyll. It's on the upper layer. Uh, then there's spongy layer uh, or spongy mesophyll is lower. That's going to provide storage and it's much more loosely arranged in order to um, allow for air to move. Of course, we've got the stomata, which are openings on the underside of the leaf to allow for gas exchange. And then we've got a cuticle, which is a waxy coating on the top and bottom that protects our leaves. Um, so again, here's our chart. Let's take a look um, at some leaves. We can have simple leaves that has just one blade. Um, and then we can have compound leaves that have this um, petiole, this stem, but they have multiple leaflets coming off of that leaf. Uh, or off of that that stem and and it's important to sort of note um, how it's attached here right that shows us that this is one petiole with um, lots of leaflets this is a petiole with one leaf blade uh, we can look at how the leaves um, have their xylem and phloem arranged we can have pinnate which means there's like this central running um, vein and then it comes off of that sort of in these nice angles or palmate where it looks much more like uh, like a river delta it's sort of scraggly um, and then parallel running in straight lines uh, next to each other we can also look at the leaf arrangement on the stem it can be alternate so it's like coming off the right side if we move up to the next node coming off the left side move up to the next node right side and so on and so on it can be opposite where when we go up we see a node and on that node we have a leaf on the left and right side um, or it can be whirled all the way around um, at the node and again these are ways in which you can identify different types of plants in an environment um, these are what field guides sort of help um, you know naturalists and scientists you know, to identify. And, and I encourage you, if you're interested in this, I mean, you can go outside and try to identify the leaf arrangements as well. Um, but there will be some videos for you to sort of look at as you're going through your worksheets. Okay, and this again is just reminding us of our uh, monocots, reminding us of our dicots. Um, and here are some unknowns. We'll, we'll look at these and then I'll uh, drop an answer key for you on the D2L. But of course, feel free also to just go back through the slides. All the pictures come from that. Um, but this will be very useful for you, like going into a lab practical. This will be sort of what it's like. So here's our unknown A. Um, you know, take a look at the arrangement of those vascular bundles. Uh, try to see you know, if you can identify that. Unknown B, uh, take a look at those vascular bundles and how they're arranged. Unknown C, uh, definitely look at those vascular bundles and maybe if there's any tissues um, surrounding them or not uh, to help you identify. And that is it. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, please feel free. Um, I have office hours. Use the Remind app to text me, send email. Um, you can set up a private office hour, not during the morning. Um, whatever you need to do, please let me help you understand. Um, otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day.